Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today I have a friend from Brazil. Her name is Carla. Hi, nice to meet you guys. I'm from Curitiba. It's very south of Brazil. It's the state right below Sao Paulo, which is a state and a city. I live in Paraná. So glad to have me. <laughs> Today I brought her here to my channel as my guest to share a little bit of her experience in Varna, Bulgaria. Right now we are in Varna enjoying this beautiful weather. Yeah, the, the spring like it's getting warmer, the sun is shining, so no complaints for now. <laughs> <laughs> so Carla, how do you feel here in Varna? You came all the way from Brazil to here like me, yeah. but her situation is different because she came from the south of Brazil, literally, Cur Curitiba is really down there. It's really down. And you came all the way from there to Varna. Yes, so my university had this program that offered double degrees. I had some cities to choose from and the option in Bulgaria was in Varna. And I chose it because of the triple degree. We talked about that in the Portuguese video we made. So mm -hmm. maybe you can have subtitles and the people want to check it out. So yeah, that's how I chose. And I had a bunch of reasons. I wanted the triple degree, which is from here. And there's one from the UK. Also, the price of living, marvelous life here, super great. People from the UK and from the United States, they love coming here. They say, oh, mm -hmm. you get a lot for your buck, you know, that's, that's how they say it. Yes, so food here, they think it's very cheap, that it's very tasty, so it's a very popular location to come, at least for vacation. Mm -hmm. Also, I found out that Varna is the port of call in some cruise ships. Oh yeah, and I thought, I live in a cruise ship port. <laughs> I'm so fancy. <laughs> Yes, this is true. Sometimes I even forget about it. Yeah, we're in the middle of what they call the Sea Garden, which is basically a smaller version of Central Park in New York. Mm -hmm. And it's like the city, like the concrete jungle, then the Sea Garden, which is huge, and then the ocean. It's like you go through this little forest and then you get to the ocean. It's so nice to have that in the middle of the city. Yes, like it's in the center. You don't have to go to the outskirts to see this. It's just in the center. Exactly. And for example, in Brazil, we do have diversity. But from my city, to see some woods, I need to drive maybe 30 minutes. And to see the beach, I need to drive one hour. So it is much more than other people are used to. But yes. still, it's not this level. Yes, and for me, for example, I was raised in Minas Gerais, like a lot of you already know, and you know that we don't have sea. And if I wanted to go to see the sea, I need to travel to Rio, that was the closest to me. And yeah, even in my city to go to parks, like, it's kind of hard because in the city we have so many buildings and it's so, um, no, it's so great. Sometimes, sometimes during summer you can see like some trees but it's not the same as here that when you want to just release your stress you just go and take your blanket and sit in your like sit in a park and you'll be fine yeah so uh, to talk a little bit about the differences I perceive as a Brazilian because Leticia she was born in Angola but raised in Brazil so she yes. has a lot of cultural similarities for me we have some cultural agreeances yes so for example one thing I know will shock a lot of other people that are not from Europe is the shower oh yeah <laughs> a lot of places don't have even a shower curtain or much less a glass door it's out in the open you gotta get the whole bathroom wet and it's not even a shower head like overhead you gotta hold it you know it's the tiny one yeah so if the bath the shower is your safe place and you want to stay there one hour and a half don't no don't and there is also a problem i don't know if you have the same but like we have heater water heater and like if you stay in your bath literally in your bathroom for like 30 minutes or over the water will be cold the warm water is very limited yes i learned that showering is for getting clean it's not about fun 
which is okay there's a lot of fun things to do yeah it's true but for example for me that takes too long to wash my hair like sometimes i have to yeah sometimes i have to go into my bathroom just to wash my hair i have to leave the bathroom do my hair outside and then go back because otherwise i'll just have to wash my hair with cold water this is not bad for hair but like during the winter oh very unpleasant yeah so yeah, now in summer you even have more water because if you want to have, you know, just a slightly warm shower just to get the heat off, you have much more water. But in winter, I had to, you know, you know, open the shower, just wet myself, close it, then put soap, you know, letter, then open again, yeah. super fast rinse. So you need to like strategize. And that's saying something because I have very easy to deal with hair so yeah. just thinking i never thought about the difficulties you had with hair i was like oh my god imagine someone with curly hair yes it's like our hair is not easy to wash we need to take some steps you know and uh, they take time so yeah uh, another point that you had to experience here so we disagree on this one actually we can have a debate on camera uh on brazil there's always everything on the market as of fruits and vegetables. There's never a day you go in Brazil, I mean, not never, but it's very rare to go and not encounter something you want. Here in Bulgaria, yesterday I went to buy uh, onions, no onions in Lidl. I had to go to a different <laughs> market. So you actually told me that you really like that because the fresh ones that arrive are super delicious yes it's just like some vegetables okay brazil is a tropical country and we have the, a lot of variety and one of the things that i miss is just the a lot of types of bananas i even complain these because i'm like here is just yeah just banana cake in brazil we had so many types of bananas and this i really miss but like Bulgaria has some um, uh, specific things that from here they are just delicious. For example, tomatoes. Oh my god. The Bulgarian tomatoes, they are just so delicious. They are so many types. I never thought like we could find so many varieties of tomatoes. Even pink tomatoes. Oh my like, god. Yeah. Yesterday pink. my mom, we were at the market, she was like, why are there so many different tomatoes? Like, yeah, I was like, yeah. It was my first experience here. Yeah, sometimes you can like see, oh, I want this, but you don't find. But it's just because Bulgaria works more with seasons. Yeah. So like there is a, a season that you can find a lot of um, watermelon. There is like a, a season that you can find a lot of cherries. There's just seasons for everything. I think it's just because Bulgaria is not tropical, so they work more with the seasons. Yeah, so that's something I miss from Brazil. That's something I really, uh, got the impact. For example, I really wanted to make a Moscow mule. People that know how to do it know it needs lemon. There was no lemon. I had to cancel the drinks. Yeah, <laughs> there simply weren't. You know, and when you can't find it, you just sometimes you can go to a different market and they have it. But sometimes if it's not the week they have it, no, nowhere will have it. Yeah, but when it's the season, you can find with really good quality. Yeah, like anywhere on the street, you can buy directly from the farmers. There's some farmers markets here. Yes. So that's something I felt a difference. I also felt a lot of difference in the taste of meat. Oh my god! Yes! I Brazilian cows are just happier and their meat is tastier. I'm sorry for vegetarian people. I know you shouldn't eat them. But like people who eat meat, the taste is not the same. Yes, I even became a little bit ill because I stopped eating red meat. Literally, when I stepped my feet here in Bulgaria, I started just eating chicken. And I was the kind of person who, like in Brazil, would you eat meat all the time, like red meat. But the meat here... Mm, you I got just, the by 12 yeah, deficiency. <laughs> yes, and sometimes people, like especially my uh, my group members, they are mostly from here, Europe, so they don't really have experience with our type of meat. And when I say about churrasco, when I say like when we go to a steakhouse, they really have this, like, uh, uh, they really have a steak 
in the in sticks and like you can see them just cutting and you can choose I want this side I want the other side and when I shared this with them they are like the uh? closest thing they have is the kebab when like the kebab is on, is on the sticks turning yeah this is the only visual they have they they don't even understand yeah. what a steakhouse is yeah it's so true and like once i i went to a steakhouse with my friend i was like oh my god <laughs> no it's just our our steakhouses are just different when we talk about steakhouse like if you go to brazil you will understand what we mean because like when you go to a steakhouse they basically have a lot of varieties of food and then people are just passing and you just I want this meat and then they put in your plate and they also have pineapples with cinnamon just going around and it's really delicious oh in my city they do bananas and cinnamon oh they also do bananas there yeah so you know a steakhouse you pay per person and it's unlimited meat very good quality meat so yeah. here sometimes and my friends told me like oh the meat from the butcher is different the meat you buy on the market is not that good but when you go to a really high-end restaurant the meat still isn't the same taste as yeah. we are used to in brazil so yeah. but i think a lot of people notice difference in food like when you go to a very far away country so it's a normal problem that yeah. everything like everyone will expect this problem yeah somehow the True. bread here is great though yeah the bread is great and they have like a lot of types so you can just choose the one that you prefer especially if you are like me that prefers the brown uh, bread you can see so many types and yeah they are really good so yeah besides food share more your experience here uh so i came for a regular exchange so i just got here for one academic year that in brazil would actually be a full year because we have five and five months of classes but here apparently it's three and three the semesters are super short here at least for business and economics three three months yeah i oh, always say okay. like the, the most studious people in the city are the medical students <laughs> because everyone else i ask them don't you have exams don't you have work to do why are you on the a party on monday and they're like, no, I don't have anything. I don't oh. have anything to do. Let's go out tomorrow again. Oh, okay. I, they usually invite me and I'm like, guys, it's a weekday. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to go for exchange program and you don't really want to do the work, Bulgaria <laughs> might be the place for you. And I'm not saying like the education is low quality. I'm just saying, you know, that for exchange students they are a little more understanding yeah you have this flexibility so you can enjoy the city enjoy the country and also study yeah exactly so there's a lot of people here on this program called Erasmus so anyone mm -hmm. from the Uni European Union will know what Erasmus is for our friends that are not Erasmus is the exchange program between all the countries on the European Union so you actually can get paid to go study and you can go as many times you want and a lot of our friends forget that it's only for European Union and I saw a friend of mine say to Leticia say yeah. you should do an Erasmus you really should look into that yeah but I'm Angolan and I don't hold an European passport so I can <laughs> it's not an option for us but they're so used to this wonderful opportunity so yeah. like if you by any chance have an European passport and you wanna, you know, have an opportunity to study a lot abroad, just find the European un uh, University that you can enroll on and just take as many Erasmus as you want. This is a really nice way to get to know Europe at least. Yeah, it's so true. Okay, so about travel perceptions. Uh, first I'm gonna talk about getting here and then I'm gonna talk going around here. Okay. A lot of people ask me, don't you get super tired from the flight? And I just say, guys, choosing Bulgaria or choosing Paris, you know, France, it would be the same trip for me. Yeah. It's the same 14 hours on a plane. And you know, Brazilians, we just put in the work. When we decide I'm going to study abroad, it doesn't matter how long the flight is. We just don't care how many connections, we just do it. 
I'm like that. <laughs> so I actually had to stay four flights. So I just did like my hometown, Sao Paulo, Sao Paulo, Paris, Paris, Sofia, which is the capital, and Sofia, Varna. Okay. It was really tiring, but it's the price you gotta pay, you know. Yeah. But did you take a flight from your city to Sao Paulo? Yeah, I had to. Oh, you are so lucky because my case, we don't have an airport in my city. So basically, I had to travel eight hours, around eight hours by bus uh, to Sao Paulo and then Sao Paulo I had a flight to Istanbul I had to sleep basically on the chairs there because my flight, I arrived in Istanbul midnight and my flight to Varna was the next day To get from Brazil to here there were three options of flights that always depart and are secure if you find another one, good for you but these are the ones that are always available it's Sao Paulo Paris Sao Paulo, Istanbul, and Sao Paulo, Doha, in Qatar. Yes. Ah, oh, there is also the option to go to Germany. You can go to Germany and from Germany come here. But I think it, it's not that often. I'm not quite sure. But I know from Sao Paulo, you can find good flights from Germany as well. Yeah, I just think it's not as frequent. Yes. So if a person from Brazil or someone from Europe wants to go to Brazil, just know these are the flights that depart most frequently and most surely. Yes, so true. You are returning to Brazil, so how are you traveling? Uh, I'm going Varna, Sofia, we're going by car. Mm -hmm. And then we're doing Sofia, Doha, we're doing by Doha, then Doha, Sao Paulo. And then we're gonna take the night bus back to the city because I have a lot of luggage. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. You've been here for a year now, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shopping here is really cheap. Oh my god, we <laughs> forgot to say that. Yeah, shopping is so good. They have so many good sales. Yes. Like, if you compare the price, like, if you just go to the uh, regular shops, for example, the ones that have in other countries in Europe, like New York, uh, Sensei, you compare the price of them, like, uh, the same outfit, from here in for example Portugal you see that here is a little bit cheaper but for the same piece so yeah it's really good to buy especially clothes here yeah and I love going to the clearance rack or buying mm -hmm. like for reverse stations so in winter you buy bikinis and in summer you buy you know winter coats mm -hmm. because the discounts are insane true I got a cardigan that originally I think it was 30 leva I got it for six Wow! And I also got like a coat, it was like a hundred leather and I bought it for like 15. So yeah, this is a really nice thing for people that want to live here or want to just, you know, tourism and just shop to your drop. Yeah. So they have a lot of sales, I love sales. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> And traveling inside Bulgaria, they have a lot of buses, but it's kind of tricky to be able to take the bus because they don't speak a lot of English on the bus station. Yes, this is a problem, but like I think if you just search on Google, you can literally manage that. But the bus is super cheap. So the trips I wanted to share were the ones I made for skiing. I went with my family on Christmas. Mm. We went to Bansko and Borovets, and the one we liked the most was Borovets. Oh, okay. Yeah, we went. Why? There was more snow. Okay. Bonsko was a little less, you know, you never went skiing, so... No. So anyone that does ski know that you need to have fluffy snow on mm -hmm. top, because sometimes if it gets too hot, the snow melts and it becomes ice and it's oh. super dangerous. And Bonsko was a little bit like that when we went. It was mm -hmm. during Christmas, so like, if you were looking for a bounce club, maybe go a little bit later when it's going to be colder. Mm -hmm. But Borovet was really good, really fluffy snow, really nice food, really nice people. Oh, nice! Uh, and if you want to pay like a premium price for a premium service, the Rila Hotel, I just looked at a place and I was like, oh, I wish I stayed here. <laughs> I wish I could stay here. Yeah, wow, I do have to explore more because literally, I never had the opportunity because the time that I came here in my first year I was trying to adjust to the country and then Corona happened and it was really long. It lasted like two years, you already know. And then 
Zamsa, Zamsa, Zamsa. <laughs> yeah, but traveling within Bulgaria is pretty easy and also I took some excursions that other people plan, you know, mm. some student organizations. We visited some caves uh, on the border with Romania. Oh, nice! So it was really fun to go in some underground places. I saw actual bats living inside an actual cave. Oh, wow! It was really fun. Yes. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff. Like if you're a student and you look for other students, you're gonna find a lot of excursions really fun. And if you are a person that really likes skiing, Bulgaria is one of the cheapest places to ski in the world. So like super super like benefits <laughs> yeah but for summer as well like we're enjoying a beautiful hot day mm -hmm. and the ocean is right there it's like free for entrance they do have paid beaches because you pay for the service of umbrellas and chairs yeah but beside all paid beaches there is a free space yeah, but this is the thing that I struggled the most to understand when I came here because like in Brazil we don't really have that. I don't know in your region, but like in Rio at least, most of the places they are just like free. We don't like, if, just if you go to a kiosk that like, yeah, you go there and you buy something, but most of the time we just have like prisons, but here it's mostly you just have to pay and you go, like if you want to go to the best places, yeah. Yeah, yeah, truly, because you pay for the service of the, you know, the chairs, sometimes they have that little thing that's always on Instagram, you know, that little cabana structure. Yeah. So you pay to rent the equipment that is already in place, because really here, I noticed everywhere there is a paid place, right beside, exactly beside there is a free place. But it's not always good, you know? I don't know if you know what I mean, but like in Brazil mostly, it's just like yeah, in the like the beach side on my state, it's very rare to have a paid place. Like everything is for free. So yeah. for example, once I visited Fortaleza, yeah, and there was a bunch of paid spots. Oh yeah, okay. So it depends, I think, on legislation and also on who buys the land, who does what. Yeah. But here, most of the places you have to pay, but but it's not expensive though. It's really affordable. How mu how much? I think five level for an hour if you want a chair. Yeah, but it's okay because the weather here is really good and you can really enjoy a good place. But if you don't use a chair, I think it's for free. Like if you leave your stuff on the ground, free. Yeah, it's true. And they also have these things that like they have beds, or, like literally they have beds on the beach, like. I, I never experienced some place that has the same, you know, like this and... Uh, oh yeah, that's what I was talking about, that it's like, um, you know, a wood structure that like has a little futon that's kind of a bed. Yeah. So yeah, and sometimes they have these curtains with really flowy fabric. Yeah. So yeah, that's what, that's what they call like a cabana service. Yes, and you can feel like you are a queen or a king. <laughs> So yeah, they do have that service. I think it's a bit expensive, but if you're like an Instagram influencer, you can do it for the gram. Definitely, you can do it for the gram in harness. Yeah, true. So yeah, these are the main differences I noticed as a Brazilian, and I do recommend Varna for study and for tourism. Yes, yeah, so I really enjoy sharing this and having this conversation with you, Carla. Thanks Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation, and I hope you can share my video, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to activate the notifications. So see you in my next video. In mm -hmm.